Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Fire Emblem Awakening. We go by Nosferatu and Arc Thunder! Yeah, you carry only the finest. Get Robin some Arc Thunders up in this hizzy. Oh my god, I'm so singing happy. In the last episode, we defended the voice, Tiki, from being slain by a bunch of Risen. And thankfully, she was able to regain all of her strength, and now she wishes to join us and defend the world once again in a new war. In this episode, we are going to take her with us and kick some booty. Nosferatu, get a hold of that. Arc Thunder, get a hold of that. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, let's exit the shop, I guess. It's also a really good reason to go through this parallel, because you can finally buy these things. Uh, we got some Obamas here for us. We got one Obama. It is Longku Obama. I thought it'd be... Okay, just thinking about how to talk to women some more, get a little bit more experience. Uh, inventory. What am I going to want to do? Tiki is a playable character now. She has a Dragonstone Plus, a bit more powerful than uh, Noe's regular Dragonstone. And she's already a level 20 Maniketti, which is really stinking amazing. Uh, but now my concern is I doubt we're going to be able to bring all of these guys with us into stinking battle. We might... Maybe they'll give us another inventory slot in the next chapter, or we might have to say goodbye to another one of our units. I really don't want to do that, though. But if I want Tiki, I might have to. Uh, in terms of support, only Robin and Cherish got one? That's a weird combo, but okay. Tiki could speak with a couple of people, actually. I thought it was only going to be Robin. Uh, Robin, Lucina, Seiri, Anna, and someone we haven't met yet. Okay. Um, I think that actually is one of the child units, but we're not going to meet them, so we can't actually talk to them. Uh, but yeah, that's a interesting group, I guess, but what do I want to do exactly? I guess first off, we'll just have Robin and Cherish talk to each other. Oh my! This one is cute. Then again, maybe not. Hmm, this one is some nice horns, but I think it's the wrong type for Minerva. Dear me, this is harder than I expected. Hey. Cherish, what are you up to? Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect timing, Robin. I want to ask you something. Huh? What about? Mm -hmm. Among your many friends, are there any particularly beautiful wyverns? Uh. Did you just ask if I have good-looking wyvern friends? Huh. Well, it was worth a shot. I'm looking for a partner for Minerva. I must have searched through dozens of portraits and letters of introduction. And yet, not a single one has been up to Minerva's very exacting standards. Um, Minerva? That massive thing you ride into battle? I er, didn't know that anyone offered matchmaking services for wyverns. Um, no one does. That's what is making it so very difficult. I've been doing everything all on my own so far. Whoa. Impressive. You're breaking new ground in wyvern relations. If I may. It's a giant leap for mankind and wyvern kind alike, I'd wager. Want to pitch in? Yeah. Well, if you think I could help. <laughs> uh, wait, you were being serious? Oh. Did you hear that, Minerva? Robin's going to help us. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at how happy Minerva is. Um. That blood-curdling sound was happiness. Well, that was kind of funny. <laughs> I assume if it was male, Robin would be just be like, we can't find a partner for Minerva, but I found a partner for myself. <laughs> okay, but, um, what do I want to do? Just want to make sure all my items are in check. Uh, let's go ahead and get Tharja up to standard. We'll trade her a newer Nosferatu. Uh, I guess there's no reason why she can't hold on to the other one as well. Uh, and Arc Thunder, I will give that to her as well. Uh, Robin has L Thunder, so I'd like to trade that. No real point in holding on to that anymore. I bought another one, didn't I? I didn't? I guess it just went right into her inventory. Uh, we'll equip this one, I guess. Uh, let's store that. I think we're good to go, so now that's taken care of, we got Tiki in our party. Let's go ahead and continue on with the main story. 
We are beginning chapter 19. Conqueror, I just... Where is his army? No... No sign of them yet, my lord. Hmm. Buying time for... Buying time waiting for what? <laughs> Please let me kill you. The fools have no idea what they've just stepped into. <laughs> oh, mustache guy's alive still. Mm, the anticipation before a battle. My hair stand on end, every one of them. Makes it difficult to brush, if I might say. But today's struggle will set course of history once and for all. What? Today's struggle? Cervantes? I think you'll mean today's slaughter. That's the spirit tactician? Really? What? Uh, no! I just finished explaining this to you. What is wrong with your ears? The resistance will destroy itself. You and I needn't so much as lift a finger. The Elysian League thinks the Dynasts no longer fear us. <laughs> but they don't understand how persuasive my methods could be. They'll know once they see their former friends with knives to their backs. What? Shives and flapjacks, you say? The battle is won before it started, and without us risking any further casualties. Yeah, brilliant if I do say so myself. And really, no one else is capable of judging. Ah, oh, well, T. Cerventus, I have a stash of grey root blend here. Simply divine. Why, Exilus, thank you. It is quite a divine stash, isn't it? It what? You imbecile stash! The T! The... Oh, why do I even bother? Uh, if only there was someone with the intellect to appreciate my talents. Yes. Cerventus. Yes, my master! Who is the pinnacle of man? body, mind, and spirit. Who is greater than the gods? Hmm. Only you, my master. A meager effort. Well, Exilus, that seems to contradict your last statement. What say you? <gasps> my master, I assure you, I meant no offense. I only celebrate achievements in your service, master, to your glory. Stand up and fight. Glory is won on the battlefield. Glory is meeting your enemy's eyes and watching the hope drain away with his life. Glory is not one holed up in a castle with plots and cowardly schemes. And I'll be dead before I let some dynast farm lord take today's glory in my stead. <laughs> Why yes, of course, and so well put, my master. Yeah, I only meant that. That sick mind of yours sees much, Exilus. That is certain. But for someone so clever, you really can't be quite daft. Not these fools. What? You dare speak to me like some child? Like your equal? <laughs> your equal? No, fear not. I will never think of you as my equal, worm. Now, if you'll excuse me, I would shave my wax up before the fight. Broomface tweet. To heck with him. With the both of them. <sighs> now, Exilus, keep your wits about you. They're all you have, besides your good looks. Let Walmart's charge ahead, the big stupid lobster. <laughs> I'll end up on the winning side one way or another. <laughs> But Ryoma's the lobster senpai. Okay. Moment of truth. Oh! Well, ain't this a pl 
pleasant surprise. We could bring all of them with us. Oh my god, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 units. That is awesome. I don't think it's going to be like that all the time from here on out, but if it is, I'll be so sinking happy. We could have Tiki and Sumia join us. That is phenomenal. So, time to decide who I want in this battle. Um, we're working with Krom and Lucina to get them maxed out, so I'll get them paired up if I could find her. Do that. Robin is with... I've been working with Seiri, so I'll put her back over here. Uh, Pain and... Uh, I've been doing Pain and Olivia. So we'll do that. And then Cherish with Long Ku. Uh, if we could find him. He is right over here. Tiki is a bit of an oddball. She is paired with a couple of my units, though, so that's nice. None of them are romance units, however. Uh, let's try... Try Sumia and Tharja, I guess. Uh, Frederick. Anna. I could start pairing Frederick up with people now that I think about it. So, Frederick and Tharja, maybe? Because I'm no longer pairing him up with Krom or Lissa. He's got A rigs with everyone now, doesn't he? Uh, let me just check. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very nice. So, I could pair him up with Tharja if I want to. Uh, Cherish, Lanku, Tiki, we'll pair you with, uh, the only one available is Anna. We never pair Anna up with anyone, so I guess it's worthwhile to just have conversations start between two of them. It's not all that, uh, memorable from what I remember of it, but, um, I guess it's something, at the very least. It's weird that Noe and Tiki can't communicate with each other, but whatever. Sumia, Frederick, Tharja. We're going to have one person left out regardless, so I like Tharja would do the best on her own, so for that reason, I might be pairing up Frederick with Sumia. But yeah, Tharja's got, like, look at all this ammunition she's got. She's... We don't have to worry about her ever again, basically, as if we had to worry about her to begin with. But yeah, it's finally time to take down the big boy. Let's go. That's him, isn't it? Walmart. Brave of him to face us. Right. Brave? Aye. But more likely, he just wants to enjoy this himself. Hmm. You do your sister's legacy proud, Prince. But humanity already has a savior. A conqueror who broke stronger men than you when they refused to bow. Warriors of Valm, ride with me now! Courage. Together we will stamp out the final pack of insurgents that unite the world! And unite the world! Let's do this. Got some pretty awesome music accompanying us as well. Get our pair-ups uh, going. Let's get Kron with Lucina, Frederick with... Sumia. Uh, are we pairing the two of them up? Oh, wait, Lissa. I forgot about her. Lissa is maxed out with everyone as well because she's with Crom and Frederick and then also Robin. So, huh. Not a good idea to have the healer alone, so I should pair her up with somebody. Uh, I guess you'll go with Noe. Now then, Tiki, you've waited a long time to uh, see the world again, and you are no stranger to, to the battlefield, that's for sure. So, I'll welcome you back by giving you the first attack. I kind of wish you could have one hit KO'd him, but oh well. Let's see. There are a lot of armored units here, so... And all, all of them are... A lot of armored... They're all cavalry? 
So it's worthwhile to come in here with beast killers, like what Frederick has right now. Uh, the beast killers, so that's good. And also, any armor slayers, I think. Sayri had one, but I put it in the convoy because I'm a dumb dumb. Uh, she can actually use the noble rapier. That might have been better for Krom or Lucina. Uh, but whatever. Hopefully, we won't be too. We won't be hurting too much by uh, not giving it to him right now. Uh, it's a little bit of damage, and even less. Let's see though. Could Robin just finish him off? Robin can't. Oh, we could reach, reach them. But could someone else do it instead? Yes, they can. Just trying to weigh out all my options. Uh, let's go ahead and have Noe attack this guy. Oh boy, we're sinking at chapter 19. It's like. We're sort of approaching the end, but like, can't really say we're super close considering every chapter takes like an hour to get through. It, like, I never really comprehended how long all these chapters are and how long this game is until the LP happened. Like, I actually saw the time lengths of all the episodes and really put it into perspective for me. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll do that. Go over here. Just let me have them get further out. And there you go. Uh, let's go down here. Attack. Booty up. And take him down. Because they have a very small percentage of actually hitting us. That's also very nice. Uh, let's see. Sumia. Head all the way up here if you want. Uh, Silver Lynx works best, but Beast Slayer could just one hit KO him, so go for it. I feel like Frederick's gonna be kicking major booty in this area, because, well, he always does that, but specifically because of his Beast Killer. It's gonna be very, very helpful. I guess we'll end up here with Lucina. Uh, just you two are left, huh? Uh, we'll attack this one. Might as well get rid of him, even though we're uh, not getting further in. They'll come to us, don't worry about that. 69! And Tharja head up here, and we're good. Alright, Walmart, give me your worst. And yes, I've been calling him Walmart this entire time. You don't need to correct me on it. It's obviously a joke. It's like the king of socks all over again. Oh, poor Olivia. Can't even do any damage. Just gotta find some non-armored units, like... Uh, well, they all seem to be armored in some capacity. Uh, Oh, hey, she did one damage. How wonderful. We got these guys going now. You can do it. You can do it. Do it, too. I'm so happy that we got to bring our entire party up in here. Because I was uh, kind of apprehensive and I was thinking about it. I was like, because in my first playthrough, there weren't that many characters I was attached to. Like, there are characters I were attached to, but, like, um, it was more so I was ones that weren't really usable to me, so I w it was easy to add new characters in, like Tiki. But, um, I was sort of worried about, now that I have all these other characters that I'm finally able to use efficiently, that I wouldn't have been able to bring Tiki in after she joined us, but thankfully, that was not the case. Now, I gotta say, I know a lot of, like, pretty much everyone doesn't want to see another Fire Emblem character in Smash Bros. ever again. I definitely don't think, even though... Uh, Fire Emblem Awakening made a lot of stinking sales for Nintendo. I really don't think that it was deserving of eight stinking, of seven stinking characters in Smash Bros. But even still, I wouldn't mind seeing Tiki become playable at one point. Cause like anytime those like things on Twitter pop up where it was like, uh, what three assist trophies would you want to see get turned into playable characters? Tiki is always high on my list for some reason because she's she would be a unique fighter from all the other Fire Emblem characters, no doubt about it. I know she uh, is a dragon similar to uh, Korn, but Korn's a very different dragon in my opinion. Just like I feel like it'd be rather different. Uh, she doesn't wield any swords, so you don't have to worry about that. I wish we could trade Korn for Tiki, so we still get the dragon stuff. But oh, and it got a rank sword. That's nice. Um, we still have the dragon stuff, but, um, we would be able to have just, like, a much cooler character. Tiki is just really cool, and Korn is the lamest of lame, in my opinion. But, unfortunately, that's probably never gonna happen. 
if we ever do get more Smash Bros. games after this, then I don't think we'd be getting more Fire Emblem characters because people are very adamant about how much they don't like them. Though I'm surprised they get, uh, they gave us Krom. I know it was kind of easy because he was an Echo Fighter, so we just like plopped him in right at the last second since he was considered for Smash Four. And I like how he turned out. He seems very different in my opinion, just uh, different than what I was expecting from him. But yeah, like there's just so many interesting Fire Emblem characters, and they are very samey. So uh, I don't think all of them are same. Like I'm fine with like. Uh, I don't know, like, if I start saying which ones I would get rid of, people are like, no, I like that character and whatnot. A uh, silver sword, don't really need that on Lucina, so we'll get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, like, which characters I would want. Lucina's my favorite one to use in Smash 4, but the, of the sword users. Uh, Robin is my favorite Fire Emblem character, period, to use. I pretty much like using them. Uh, Nosferatu broke, but we don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, what else? Ike is very... Not very different, but like he is different enough to where I'm okay with him. I don't really consider him too much of a clone of Martha and Roy. Especially since they changed up their attacks a bit in Brawl Onward. Uh, his B, neutral B was a bit changed up, so I don't consider him to be that samey to Ike anymore. Prove yourself. But yeah, there's like only so much you could do with like a straight up sword user. Call in the reinforcements! Let the cavalry rain upon them like a blizzard of swords! As to be expected, there's going to be reinforcements, so uh, just keep on doing what you're doing, I guess. Oh my god, there's so many sinking enemies around here. Uh, let's have Tiki. Uh, Tiki can take someone down, hooray! Go and do that. It's so cool to finally see her with us. I sing and love this character, even though I don't fully grasp the, his hit the history. But <laughs> even though I don't fully grasp the hisp. Wow, the history behind her. Because I didn't play the original Fire Emblem, and I probably never will. I would very much like to see more Fire Emblem games get remade, because Shadows of Valencia was actually phenomenal. I really, really like that game, so I hope we get more Fire Emblem remakes, because so many of them are old and, like, very outdated and whatnot. Uh, let's have... Let's get rid of this guy. But yeah, um, of the seven Fire Emblem characters, like, I wouldn't mind if we got rid of... Like, Marth and Roy. I know that sounds kind of weird because, like, they're the main ones, but I don't know. Whatever. They're here to stay, though, so it's just that, like, in the future, I would like uh, vastly different characters if they ever give us more Fire Emblem characters. I'm fine with more Fire Emblem characters if they're just different. Like, I kind of would would have preferred Azura um, to be playable instead of uh, Korn just because she was a spear user and a dancer. I think that would have been really cool. Um, I know the dragon stuff is cool and all that jazz, but again, I feel like Tiki is more well suited for that and just like a lot more popular of a choice. Hector's Axe, speaking of an old, of uh, uh, beloved characters, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I know there's like a lot of characters to choose from. Thankfully, Fire Emblem Heroes, you can still like kind of get your Smash roster in there because every, almost every Fire Emblem character is in that game. And I, I'm surprised how much I, uh, played that game and how long I've been playing it. And I, I really wish... Like so easy. I feel invigorated too, Cherish. All right. Um, I think I sneezed out my train of thought. What was I talking about? Um, I'm surprised how um uh, addicted I've gotten to Fire Emblem Heroes. I don't think I've been playing. I would be playing it for as long as I have. But it's a really stinking solid game, and I really like it. I like how it's constantly bringing in new content. But uh was that okay she's like i think she said could i rely on you for anything and stuff uh whatever that was cool i guess really gotta be reading that and why i'm skipping all of a sudden um let's go and attack this guy i guess oh uh, but yeah i'm surprised how much i've been playing that game and how long i stuck with it it keeps on bringing new content it's a lot of fun and i have not spent a single dollar on it and i still got so many singing characters and i'm enjoying it every uh every day Still, though, I would... I've become very tempted to spend money on it, though I've heard, like, a bunch of horror stories of, like, how much money people spend on those games, and I don't want to fall into that. Don't want to get in that habit, so I'm just not even going to bother. Uh, it is very, very tempting, though, because... Like, it's crummy, though. I wish there was an option to, like, pay money to get heroes rather than just pay money to get orbs, because it's not a guarantee that you'll even get the heroes you want if you buy the orbs, so... It's too risky for my in my opinion i don't know if like the bot orbs 
uh, weigh the scale more in your favor, or tip the scales rather. I don't think they do, but because of that, I just don't see the point in uh, getting them. Uh, Lissa, I could massacre this guy. Okay, good to know. Oh, but yeah, it's uh, just how I feel about the game. Though, there's just so many characters that I want, even though, like, uh, I don't want to spend money. just, like, really get bummed out whenever I get the same characters over and over again, or I waste my orbs or all that jazz. But I gotta just keep telling myself they're just stinking JPEGs or PNGs, still images of anime waifus or husbandos or whatever. So just be rational about what is and isn't worth it. It's like Love Live. It's not worth your time if it's a still image. Sick burn. Idol Master is better. Fight me, bro. Okay, let's take care of that guy. I was actually talking about Idol Master. Yeah, shocking scandal of the century. Midnight Beyond was talking about Idol Master recently. Oh my golly gee. No. Someone was talking about uh, male idol animes and how they're like completely different from uh, female idol animes. Uh, there is a spin off called Idol Master Side M, which is a bunch of boy idols. And I don't know. With how, with how Cinderella Girls went, I kind of been apprehensive to. Uh, go into it because Cinderella Girls, it was the best part for me was the quality upgrade because I'll be honest uh, the original Animal Master anime it does not have the best animation. I would I would honestly go as far as to say that Xenoglossia has better animation than the Idol Master anime which came out years later. But um, Cinderella Girls has phenomenal animation it's so stinking beautiful and that's not Good. I was not expecting Frederick to be the first one to fall. That's really unfortunate. It's also really bad that Sumia is uh, on her own. Let's see if we can get her over to Tharja. Uh, just uh, so she could have a partner. Very, very good. Level up. But as I was saying, uh, with Idol Master Side M, the I'm really interested in it because as far as story goes, uh, Cinderella Girls wasn't all that great, and, like, I don't know, I feel like when Mil the Million Live Girls got introduced, I just got, like, it was too overwhelming, and I kind of prefer Idol Master to just be, like, a wholesome little group of characters that, like, have a lot of development into them, as opposed to just being, like, literal millions of girls now from all these different spin-off things, and, like, I don't like it all that much. Thankfully, the main games still stick to just the main characters, but... I don't know, it's, like, too much for me, and I couldn't get into Cinderella Girls because I didn't care about uh, the majority of these characters. If I could just trade Anastasia for Iori, I would just be so stinking happy, and life would be so perfect. But we can't have nice things, so unfortunately we're stuck with her. Uh, but Side M, I might give it a try one day, especially if it's, like, as varied as that tweet led me to believe. Because, like, I made that reply being like, I really gotta check out Idolmaster Side M, a lot of people liked it, so I assume there might be something in there for me that I wouldn't expect otherwise. Because I'll just have to wait and see. Just keep on going. Oh, jeez. I remember, uh, speaking of Idolmaster, I um, actually imported Idolmaster Daily Stars for DS, and uh, it's Japanese exclusive, so uh, the only way I can play it is on a DS Lite, because that wasn't region locked. Uh, well, I guess the original DS wasn't either, so I just I can't play it on a 3DS, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it was that was actually my first Idolmaster game that I got, I believe. It was the first one I played, and uh, it was kind of eh, but it was just cool that I actually have it. There's only one other DS game that I wanted to import, and that's Chibi Robo uh, 3, which is. I think it has like a different name, depending on like, what, who you ask, but I, I refer to it as Welcome Home Chibi Robo Happy Rich Big Sweep. That's like the literal translation, but. Um, I think a lot of people just say Chibi Robo Clean Sweep to have like a shorter name. I know there's a fan translation of it, and I actually was talking to someone who was uh, telling me about the game. They said they actually prefer it over the original, which was a uh, very high praise, in my opinion. And I've never actually looked too deep into the game. I don't know much about the story or whatnot. I know the main premise of it, which is really intriguing to me. If you know what, I'm, what it is, then I'm sure you'll be too. Uh, I won't say anything in case you don't want to be spoiled. But it is something that I've always been interested in looking into. But I never really got the chance to because I don't know that much about emulators. So I won't be able to play the fan translation that's out there. I know that there are people who put fan translations on actual cartridges, though. I... But it's not, like, officially supported by the people who do the translations because it's illegal to be making money off of that. Uh, so I don't really know who to go and ask whenever those things pop up. Uh, like, I got a Mother 3 cartridge that actually had the fan translation on it. So 
obviously that wasn't sold by Tomato or anyone who worked on the fan translation. It was like a, a third, like someone who stepped in sort of did it illegally. So was it illegal for me to purchase it though? I'm just like, I'm just like the effect of the illegal persons. Like it wasn't intentional, except it was fully intentional. It was just like, I had nothing to do with its existence. I just took it from them and gave them money in exchange for it. Uh, I'm probably a bad person for doing that, but um, I know I want to like, for Chibirobo Clean Sleep, I would love to have that on an actual cartridge just so I could play it, though considering it would be a Japanese cartridge, I would only be able to play on DS Lite is what I was getting at, I guess. I do have the DS Lite though, so I could do it. And then the other game that I would want to import is the uh, second Ace Attorney Events Investigations game, uh, just because I want it, I guess. Uh, even though I didn't finish the first one just because I couldn't get into the gameplay and I was just like too different for me, it was too weird, so I didn't really bother with it. Uh, though I know Video Games Awesome will be playing that on their channel soon, so I guess I'll be watching them play that and if it's fun then maybe I'll uh, get into it myself, but for now I'm just sort of uh, not really bothering with that one. Uh, let's have... Let's go with Tharsha, Tharsha over here. Sumia, I'm surprised you survived. Um, we will have Robin go over here. So Ace of Attorney Investigations and Clean Sweep are the only other import games that I kind of want to get because there are translations for them. I know there's also a translation for Beyond the Labyrinth, I believe it's called. That was like a very early 3DS game that really interested me. And I don't know what it was, but like I was... When the 3DS first came out, I was like actively keeping track of every single game that got released for it. And uh, Beyond the Labyrinth was one of them, and I was uh, really wanted to get it, but it never came out in North America. But I know there is a fan translation for it, but I don't know if it's fully complete. I've seen like varied results that like made it kind of confusing where like the voice acted cutscenes weren't translated, but the text was, which was weird. I don't know if that ever got updated though. Um, but what else was there? Like, I remember when. Uh, keeping track of all the games that were coming out for 3DS. Uh, one of them was Rodea the Sky Soldier, which was actually just a port of the Wii version. And we eventually got that in the form of the Wii U version, which just which is just a 3DS version on a Wii U, but it also came with the Wii version, which is the definitive version in a lot of people's opinions. So it's really sick and confusing. Rodea the Sky Soldier is really weird. But uh, I'm glad we finally got it, though. And then the last one... A uh, game that just really interested me during the 3DS's launch was Bravely Default. And I've told this story before of like how I was so upset that I wound up not getting it on release. Because like it interested me from the beginning was only in Japan. Like we weren't sure if we were going to get it. But by the time like it was coming out, I had already been buying so many singing collector's editions or like pre-order uh, bonuses of games that like I didn't really care for. I was just getting them simply because they came with collector's stuff or pre-order stuff. And it was always just like an art book and soundtrack, art book and soundtrack, and I never really cared for it. And I never really liked the games. It was just, I was spending too much money and I uh, just sort of had to stop myself. But uh, what happened was I, uh, right before the days of uh, the game's launch, everyone started magically talking about Bravely Default. And hello, Walmart, okay. Behold, I am Walmart, the Conqueror. And you are but a pebble upon my path to immortality. He doesn't mess around. He's not going to wait for us to go to him. He'll just come straight to us. Okay. He has a sword that can heal him. Also, the name of that sword seems familiar to people who played newer games, probably. Are you going to finish him in one hit, Tharja? Okay. Sure. You do you, Tharja. You think you've won? You blow as if you douse a candle, but you only stroke the fires of heck. Ruin the moment by not swearing. Hee hee hee. We got soul. And that's it. With their leader gone, they have no desire to continue this battle. And Antiki are the MVPs. Walmart has retreated into the capital. Fee, will this war ever end? Yes. His men gave their lives to secure his escape. They won't lay down arms until he does. Now. Then we must pursue and see that the deed is done.
What? Oh no, we're surrounded! The dinosaurs ride against us! <laughs> Hold, sir. Look! They're red and green. Okay, real quick, before we end this chapter off, I just want to finish my story. Um, Right before uh, Bravely Default's release, everyone started magically talking about it, and I was, like, super confused. I thought it was just going to be, like, a no-name 3DS game that nobody cared about, but everyone was suddenly talking about how they were so excited for it and how it was super good. And I didn't end up getting it because I was, like, out of town. I wasn't able to pre-order it in time, and I missed out on the Collector's Edition. And I have been searching for a long stinking time for that Collector's Edition ever since then, and I could never find it. But did I ever find the Collector's Edition? I guess I will continue that story next time on Fire Emblem Awakening, because that's clearly the priority right now in this war that we're in. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night, and how is this episode only 38 minutes? My god. <laughs>